So today I want to share with you 10 habits of millionaire traders. Traders are doing really well in the market, having good results. People I've interviewed either on my podcast or people I've talked to, people I've met over the years of being a trader myself. I'll show you these habits and these are things you can use for your own trading, your own benefit to grow and become better. And hopefully by having the same habits, you can reach the same level of success that these people have in a shorter amount of time than they did. So let's dive right in. All right, let's begin with the obvious. Number one is finding the sessions you're best at. Now, a lot of traders are trying to trade all sessions they can, trading London, New York, Tokyo, trying to get all their hands on any kind of trade they can find in the market. But that usually results in not very good results because you're always trying to kind of confuse different sessions and different sessions have different characteristics. They move in a different manner. So you trying to master all sessions is tough in the beginning. You can do it over the years, but it's something that you are better focusing on one thing at first. And then eventually, once you have some free time, you get better, then you can look at trading the other sessions. But there's no need to overdo it. Focus on what you're best at and stick to it. It's going to be a lot better than trying to split your time and resources into learning different strategies for different sessions and being only average or kind of mediocre at all these sessions. Okay, number two here on my list is finding a daily routine that works for you and then sticking to it. And this will reduce by a lot decision fatigue. A lot of shares are kind of showing up in the market, taking trades when they feel like it. I know a guy who wanted to do some coaching with me, and he just told me that he would go at his chart whenever he had time, go there, take some trades as he felt like it, and kind of try to make money in the moment as he was in the chart. Had no routine, no consistency, and his results were all over the place. Some ones were really profitable, some weeks were really bad. He just didn't have any kind of sense of routine and consistency, which is very hard to succeed. So if you have a routine you can stick to, that makes your life easier, meaning you're able to kind of find your best focus that way. You're able to kind of sit down at the chart, take some trades where you're supposed to take them and not chase the market. You're able to do your journaling on top of that and you're able to keep track of things on the side. Then that's the kind of routine you want to have. The big advantage of routine is that, first of all, it gives you more consistent results because you put in consistent actions, but also reduces the drag you have on you. If you feel like you do things that are very spontaneous or you don't have really much time to plan or you're always like in the moment, last minute, it's very draining for your mental energy. And that doesn't work very well for trading. You want to be as much as you can kind of focus on the right stuff and have a process already planned out where you just have to show up and do it. And then things are much better for your mindset and you don't have to like drain all this energy trying to find out what to do or what you should be focusing on right now because you know your routine takes care of itself and will get you the results you want in the future. Number three here on my list, which is a big one, you need to pay attention to this one for sure and the coming ones as well is you need to every single week do a review of your trades and find out which trades you've taken and which trades you've missed. Now this is a very big lesson because I know only a handful of traders who are looking at the trades they missed. They look at the trades they th they've taken, look at the wins they lost sometimes. Uh, most often the wins, they kind of are proud of them, they show on social media and stuff, but they don't look at the trades they missed in that week or the trades they didn't take. And they don't look at why they took them or why they didn't take them and what mistakes they made on those trades. Maybe if you took all the trades you saw in, in a week, you would have much better results. Your results would be like amazing, but you don't know if you don't track it. Or maybe if you took all these trades in a week, your results would be really bad and you gotta have more filtering, but you don't know if you don't track it. I've done a video a few days ago on that exact principle of how to do a weekly review. The same process I use myself to look at the trades I miss and the trades that could give me a better p and I look at this on a weekly basis without fault. You should have the same process. If you wanna use it, it's very simple, but I recommend you watch the video here. It's going to be linked in the corner and you'll learn how to do that review process. Go back to your trades, find out the trades you've missed, why you missed them and how to become better from those. It's going to be a very good video to watch next for sure. So pay attention when you skip trades or when you over trade, it's usually a sign that there's something wrong with your mindset. And we need to be aware of that to start to work on your mindset also, which we'll cover later. Okay, habit number four is a big one. It's all about connecting with high players. A lot of new traders I talk to make that mistake so easily from the start. They are connecting with other newbies. They're new to trading, therefore they say, well, I should make a community of new traders. We can talk, we can share ideas, but they're all new traders. How do you want to grow with that? How do you want to evolve? One guy will pick something you read online. One guy will pick something you read online. They don't know if it works or not. They don't know if it's going to help them reach their goals. They always stuck in that mindset of beginners. They will always be like, oh, we don't know how to do because we're still beginners. If you connect instead with higher players, people who are doing what you want to do in the future, either full-time traders, either investors, either profit traders, either even like some private fund traders, then 
imagine how your results will be a lot better right because then you're connecting with people who are achieving better goals than you they can actually coach you and give you advice on where you are and you don't want to just like take away from these people you don't want to like ask them for advice all the time of course you don't want to be like oh you should help me become a profitable trader i need your help please help me do this for me help me with that you don't want to do it in that kind of perspective but if you're actually connecting with these people in a good way so you're giving you're taking a little bit you ask them questions but you show you're interested in them then you get a lot more growth out of that compared to like being around other newbie traders trying to become profitable. And it goes well beyond that point also. It goes where if you're at a point where you are successful trading full time, you want to get more capital, then want to connect with investors and have high player investors around you. People you can talk with to know how the capital game works. People you can connect with to maybe have connections of who could give you capital to trade with. All these things are very useful to understand. Right, so I found over the years that the level and the quality of people that run you makes a big difference in the results you get and the opportunities you have for growth. If you're on newbies around broke people, you're gonna stay broke. If you're on people who are making money, have an abundance mindset, your results will probably get a lot better. And it doesn't just go for if they make money or not, it goes for the quality of people also. So if they're like people who are encouraging you or kind of lifting you up or pushing you to achieve your goals, that's better than people who are always dragging you down want to go drink, want to go party, or want to do whatever, and not helping you to reach your goals. So pay attention to who you're around. Okay, number five is one that I love to talk about, and I've been surprised of this many times in the past, where I would actually interview a really good trader, someone that I really, really admire, they're like really good, making millions of dollars a year, and they actually ask me about my trading style and what I do. They want to know, they're curious about what I do, what I trade, and kind of how I see the market. And to me, I, like nobody compared to these guys. They are making a lot more money than I do, probably a lot more successful than I am, but they still want to know how I do things. They're curious about the market, how it works, and about other people, and they want to know other ways they could improve their trading. So as you can talk with a guy who's doing something different completely, trading a different strategy entirely, but they have some advice, they have some tips, or some, maybe some small trick they do different that you could use for your own trading. And if you're curious about these people or these trading styles, you'll get that tip, you'll use it for your own trading, you'll grow more. But if you're not curious, you just don't care, you think, oh, my strategy is the best, I'm the best trader in the world, I found the best edge possible, then you cannot grow that way. You'll only stay stuck to your own small little bubble and not advance and become better. So pay attention to who is around you and be curious about the market. Always try to learn new things. I found the guys who are really successful are always curious about the market and other people around them and how they trade. And it's a really good lesson to follow. If you stay complacent, your results usually go backward and you won't really be able to get better results over time. So try to always learn new things and be around people who can push you to learn and become better. Okay, the six habits is a big one here on trading like a business, but not a hobby. You'll see people who are newbies and trading, they're like beginners, they want to get rich really quick. They want to find the right trades today to make them millionaires and they'll always decide when they want to trade based on how they feel based on what money they want to make they get to the chart on like a whatever afternoon where the market's not moving at all try to force trades for them it's kind of like a gambling hobby the same way someone will go to the casino to kind of gamble make some money have fun a little bit they would do the same thing with their own trading and of course you know that the casino always wins and the trader or the person who's at the back playing the game doesn't win but if you treat it instead as a real business where you have a business plan you have things you do you have a plan to grow become better you have a process to review your trades then there's no way you cannot improve and become better it's, it's for sure you're going to get better over time but if you always play it small or you hope that you that things will be easy you hope that someone will give you the recipe to success in trading one day and you hope that everything will be given to you for free on like a, a gold platter then that's not going to happen that's seeing trading like a hobby and not a real business and of course businesses fail over the years not all the businesses that open will stay in business for a long time but if you do it like a hobby and you are actually and you're not just about how you do things and you're not like consistent or methodical about your your way of doing things then the chances of succeeding are close to zero and that's just not going to happen so you want of course it goes with having a routine having processes things you go through having a, a system to review your trades having a system to take trades, having a plan, having a way to increase the capital, having the right finances, all the stuff is part of your business and you should be treating trading that way for sure. All right, number seven is something that I've been doing myself for years and I've seen people do it quite a lot, is to cut out most of the news. Now, we'll agree for sure that some news and tradings are important to know. You want to know like what what's in the economy, what things are happening. You want to know the big teams, you want to know the, maybe the news releases, like what's going on in certain countries, what are the interest rates, what's happening there. But you don't need to know about all the murders and things happening out there. There's no point in knowing that or being aware of that. There's no point knowing if someone got killed in a car crash. It's irrelevant to you. 
If you cut out all these news, only pay attention to things you need to know to become better. Uh, you'll see it's a lot easier to be not negative when you cut out the news that you don't need. And it's a lot easier to kind of also not be distracted. Uh, people who follow the news very closely are always in like that fear mindset. They're always stuck in like that, that cycle of, oh, things are not going well, it's not going to go well for sure. Things are going worse and worse over time. Uh, but people who don't follow the news don't care about that stuff. They actually see it as, oh, things are, go are getting better. I'm growing, I'm becoming better, I'm achieving my goals. So it's a whole different mindset based on whether you follow the news or not. So pay attention to the news you need to pay attention to. Cut out the stuff you don't need and the stuff that's not useful to you or not good for your mindset. And you'll see results get a lot better. I don't know many people who are successful reading the news every single morning and like reading the, the murders or watching TVs and kind of caring about what's happening out there and who, who got killed and what happened and, and so on. It doesn't matter. Okay, number eight. I'm going to get a lot of hate for this one, but I really believe, and I've seen this for all the traders I talk to who are really wealthy. They make money and invest way beyond trading. Trading is not the whole thing, the only one career. They have other stuff on the side. They might invest in real estate. They might buy a couple of houses that they can kind of invest money in and kind of keep it there for a while until it grows in value. They might buy some other businesses. They might invest in things that they care about. They might even just, in, just invest in ETF and kind of grow the money that way. They know trading works really well for them, but they also need other ways to diversify because what if one day they want to just retire, spend less time on the charts. They could be trading like five hours a day now, but what if they want to go and trade two hours a day later or even like just an hour a day or they want to be completely hands off the trading. They need to have other ways to make income and other ways to grow their income than trading for sure. When I talk to new traders, all they see, all they care about is how can I get rich with this trading thing? How can I make this my own, my only thing to make me money every single day? Uh, you see this showed off a lot on Instagram and on these social media. It's very popular to all. I just like wherever I am in the world, I just open my laptop, make a bunch of money that day, more than my nine to five salary. Then I go away and enjoy the day. Yeah, sure. That's kind of the, the mindset of trading that that works well, but it's not going to happen every day. And you need to invest your money in other ways to grow it. You never want to put all your eggs into one basket. That's a crazy way to live life. Because what if this doesn't work? What if you broke your clothes? What if they keep your capital? What if something bad happens where you lose all that, all that capital? You, you'll be screwed. But if you have other ways to make money, other income streams, to invest in some areas, kind of grow your money that way, then things will get a lot better for you. And you won't be stuck in always trying to make that trading thing work. You have that stress and you can just start to build an empire around your trading. It's not just about this one thing, it's about the whole thing, about all these other areas you can invest and grow your money in. And that all together makes it a good financial strategy. And all that together makes it a good financial strategy. I don't know if it's because people don't have any money, like they don't have a good money mindset that they are thinking trading will be the only way they'll make money forever after and they will get rich from it. Or because I've seen people that have money, like have a business, have things on the side, they don't see trading as like this one thing to get rich. They see it as a tool to grow their money, but it's not their only thing. They have other things on the side, they want to invest in some other areas, they want to grow in some different things, they might even want to start a business, sell some products or create something that doesn't exist out there. They have a much more open mind to the financial markets and how this plays a part into the strategy for wealth building. People who don't have money kind of are stuck into this one frame of mind where trading is the one thing, I'm gonna get successful with this, I'm gonna be a world-class trader, but if I get these other areas on the side and they just have like a $100 in their account, which is not worth it. So be careful how you see trading, be careful how you invest your money also and have ways to grow your capital over time, not just like trade to make trading work and that only thing by itself. Now, I will agree in the beginning, it's good to only focus on trading to kind of make it work. But as you start to make some money with it, or even before that, you want to have more capital for your own trading, find other ways to make money, develop some more skills, uh, get paid to do some services out there and reinvest that into your own trading account. That works really well. But don't see trading as a get rich quick scheme or as a one way to get rich. That just won't happen. And if you disagree, you can always leave me a comment below. I would love to hear what you have to say about it and what your thoughts are. Happy to chat and read your comments for sure. Okay, number nine is a good one. And I'm gonna kind of free out some hates I've got from the past habit into this one, which is don't fall for FOMO, fear of missing out. Don't fall for people out there saying, oh, you gotta buy this stock, you gotta buy this company, you gotta buy this, this pair, you gotta trade this, you gotta trade that. You need to trade this pattern, you need to, to learn these uh, smart money concepts or you need to learn these things. That stuff is all bullshit because whatever you need to, to do is create your own path and your own way to learn things and just focus on that. There's no reason to all fall for these other techniques because most of them don't even work. And also just like another good way to do things long term. You want to be able to stick to your own style, stick to your own plan, and that's it. You want to be able to stick to your own style, stick to your own plan, and that's it. There's no reason to fall for other stuff, no reason to chase the price in the market. If you know your plan works well and you can stick to it long term to make money. 
that's definitely a good one. Okay, last one, number 10 of these millionaire trader habits, which I've seen people use and have good results with. Have a plan and have goals for your trading. Now you'd be surprised how most people don't have goals or they have a goal, but the goal is like, oh, I wanna, I wanna become a millionaire by next year. That's their goal. Or the goal is, um, I wanna be able to quit my job and trade full time. That's the goal. Well, that's a good goal. That's really cool. Uh, good that you have that goal. But how about you break it down into different action steps you can do right now to get to that goal faster? What are some actions you can do and some milestones you can reach to get to that goal? That should be part of your goal. That should be a plan to achieve that bigger goal you have. So if you make this and you have a good plan that's in place where you can actually go and go and do things with your daily routine that will help you to reach that bigger goal, then you're in business, you're doing things well. But if you just have an idea of where you wanna go, you have a vision but no plan, it's a lot tougher to get there. And it's gonna be more difficult to achieve that goal. So be careful how you see trading, be careful how you plan out things and do it the right way. I hope this video was useful for you as always. Hope you liked it and you can always let me know in the comment section below if you want to get my free strategy course i teach you a whole strategy i have for free you can learn all the all the rules all the step behind it i'll leave the link below the first thing in the description will be for that course that you can just grab for free and don't forget to subscribe for some time yet i post videos like this three times a week two videos in the week one interview in the weekend with the trader who is doing really well so you can learn from what they do learn their techniques learn their best tips and use it for your own trading and with that being said i'll catch you back here in the next video pretty soon ciao